Sokatoa, Sokatoa, Trig ratios, Trig ratios. These can help us solve triangles. These can help us solve triangles with right angles. With right angles. So Sokatoa is the uh, you could call it mnemonic that we use to remember the formula for the tree primary trig ratios that we'll be using in class. So so stands for the sine ratio, which is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. Cosine stands for the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. And the tangent or toa stands for the opposite divided by the adjacent. So the opposite the adjacent and the hypotenuse are all sides of a right angle triangle in relation to an angle. So this sine ratio, cosine ratio, tangent ratio, it's about relationships between different sides of a tri right angle triangle and how they operate together given a specific angle. And it's pretty much like a family relationship. Let's look at it. So, this is mommy, this is daddy, and this is the baby. So, remember, you know, in a triangle, you have three angles and you have three sides. So, in this family, you have three persons. So, mommy will call this one daughter. Right? Daddy will call this one daughter. Same way. But this one, we'll call this one, mommy. Mommy. And this one, we'll call this one, daddy. And this one, we'll call this one, wifey. And this one, we'll call this one, Hussy. Only will pass it spell. Alright. So just like how there are different relationships in a family between one member and another member. Similarly, when we talk about the sine ratio in a right angle triangle, we're talking about how the angle operates with the opposite and the hypotenuse. When we're talking about the cosine ratio, we're talking about how the angle operates with the adjacent and the hypotenuse. When we're talking about the tangent ratio, we're talking about how the opposite operates or the angle operates with the opposite and the adjacent. So we're going to be exploring now how to actually label the size of a right angle triangle given an angle or in relation to an angle. So I want to look at how to label the right angle triangle in relation to an angle. So here it is, we have a right angle triangle. We know it's right angle because of this little square right here. And here we're given an angle. Now this symbol means theta and it represents any angle. For example, this could be 30 degrees. Maybe it could be 45 degrees. It could be 60 degrees. It just represents some angle. Now, the first line I'm going to introduce you to is what we call the opposite. Now, if I take this, if I do this, and I come right across, notice I'm keeping a straight line. This will touch the line that is called the opposite. And the reason why it's called the opposite is because if the angle is on the left, the line is going to be on the right. Now this angle is on the right, so the line is going to be on the left. See? So the opposite is the line across from the angle, that given angle. Fair enough? And we're going to introduce it now to the adjacent. So the adjacent is pretty much the line that forms the angle with the hypotenuse. Or you could say the line that is on the angle. Notice that the angle is here 
and the line on it is this one. So this one is what we call the adjacent. Adjacent. Great. And everybody don't know the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the longest line of the right angle triangle and it is opposite to the 90 degree. Good. So this is the hypotenuse. Great. So notice we have the opposite that is across from the angle. We have the adjacent that is beside or on the angle and everybody don't know the hypotenuse. Let's label a few more. So, you can label them in any order. We know that the hypotenuse is the longest line. So, I could put in this as a hypotenuse already. And notice it is across from the 90 degree angle. So, this is a hypotenuse. Great. We need the adjacent and the opposite. Remember we said that the adjacent was right on the angle? Notice, here's the angle. Here's the hypotenuse. The other line that's on the angle is the adjacent. Notice that this is the line that is on the angle. So it's, this one will be the adjacent. And the last one is the opposite. So to find the opposite, if the angle is on the left as it is here, the opposite should be on the right. Or if I take a little dot and draw a straight line across from the angle, it will touch the opposite. So this line here is what we call the opposite. Opposite. Great. So far, so good. Let's look at the last one. So, here it is that we have the angle. We know the longest line, that is going to be the, the hypotenuse. And the angle is formed between the hypotenuse and the adjacent. So if this is the angle, this is the hypotenuse, then this must be the adjacent. See that? And the last line that is left out must be the opposite. Let's prove it. Find the angle, draw a straight line across. This touches the opposite. So this line is the opposite. Can you try these now?